Hi guys, this is Jay Weston from Hyperfocal Design. Today I wanted to talk about HDRIs some more and uh, how they're different from what I've been calling um, medium dynamic range images. Uh, a more technical term is probably uh, clamped HDRIs. And uh, if you've got a, a HDRI that's medium dynamic range or, or it's been clamped, essentially it just means it hasn't been shot correctly and whereas you know the goal of a HDRI is to have the entire range of whatever scene you're shooting contained in it so if it's supposed to be you know if you're looking at the sun the entire brightness of that sun should be captured down to the the disk of the sun but if we look at this one for example it's just a free one I've downloaded off the internet it starts to clamp out and uh, and lose brightness kind of around the four stop mark so uh, you know a, a bright fully exposed sun like this should be around 16 stops but if we if we come down to 16 in Photoshop here it's just black and what that means is uh, in simple terms if you've got a, uh, a sky dome like an entire hemisphere of the sky with this tiny little sun in it and that's only putting out sort of four stops of light in a, in a tiny little area uh, and then the entire sky dome around it is is blue then it's outputting very little light and you're going to get tons and tons of blue light in your uh, in your scene in your image based lighting 3d cg scene so that's uh, that's what a, a clamped sky or hdri looks like um, and i'll just compare it to one i've shot um, here's the, this is a few frames from um, a time lapse hdri sky dome I've shot. This one's comparable sort of time of day to the one we've just looked at. So again if we adjust exposure and come right down you can see the actual sun disk itself there down around 16 stops it starts to fade out and that's not been clamped at all so the big benefit to, to that is that whereas a, a clamped sun Apart from also being, um, you know, not giving you any lighting information in your in your scene, it's also going to clamp out at a white value, so you're never actually going to get any color lighting information from the sun. Whereas this will be very slightly uh, yellow, and then as you go closer towards sunset, it'll um, it will give you more yellow orange lighting, uh, and of course the range will drop off a bit more as well, and you end up getting some more of that kind of yellow and blue lighting scheme from the direct sun and the, the full light from the sky. Um, so again, so that's 16 stops for kind of a, a fully revealed sun that's not behind cloud. And then this is a frame taken just around or just on sunset. And if you look at the sun there, it starts to dim out around five five or six stops so you should sort of look at that as a a benchmark for kind of what you're looking at uh, in terms of EV or stops for HDRIs between midday and sunset so that's 16 for midday to sunset down to kind of uh, yeah five or six stops around sunset you may have uh, you may have less range um, or more range depending on how hazy it is or if there's any light cloud cover stuff like that and then after sunset you only have kind of one or two stops of range dynamic range also just quickly if we look at uh, a frame here that's uh, where the sun is concealed by cloud you can see that uh, as you'd expect that cloud will make the sun a little bit dimmer and then it's kind of starting to start losing range about the 12 stop mark there compared to 16 if, if it wasn't behind cloud and on heavily overcast days where the, the cloud completely blocks out the sun you'll only have you know one or two stops of dynamic range in a, in a sky like that Okay, so here we have the clamped MDR 
sky dome that we were just looking at in Photoshop and this is lighting the entire scene there's no additional lights or ambient lighting or anything like that and uh, as you can see because of that very weak sunlight uh, the incorrectly captured sun the, the sky the blue sky is contributing way way too much to the overall scene lighting which gives us this blue color cast and along with the uh, the very low contrast and blurry shadows it just makes it look like it's twilight or, or overcast or something like that and you can also see in the highlight of this rough dark material there's very little uh, the uh, the highlight hasn't got enough the sun hasn't got enough strength to show up in that rough highlight and uh, that can certainly affect um, a whole range of materials from refle reflective to diffuse and, and rough materials uh, so if we compare this to my own uh, that I've shot with a, a neutral density filter with the correct number of brackets that's the wrong time of day Okay, so that's a similar time of day there now. If you look at that highlight position, it's you know, close enough. They're both early afternoon, except uh, this one here with the, the unclamped sun is showing up in this very rough black reflective material, uh, whereas it's not at all really in, in this one. Uh, you can also see we've got crisp shadows with contrast there's no color casting because the the sky isn't contributing enough blue light compared to the very bright unclamped sun and the other the other big problem with clamped suns in these medium dynamic range images is that they don't have any lighting information in them when they get clamped they uh, they generally stick to like a, a grayscale value so there'll be no subtle uh, yellow light or anything like that coming from the sun. And generally what people do with these medium dynamic range images to, to sort of fix them up is, uh, this is a quite a popular one, you just crank this gamma value here until you get a sharper shadow, but of course it just makes the color cast even worse uh, it's just very very saturated looking uh, and the shadow isn't really even that sharp so you know you're gonna have to take this node and put in like a desaturated desaturation node or, or something like that in there and it becomes a sort of multi-step process and then the, the sun is still clamped to that grayscale value and it's just uh, it's just pretty awkward and it's going to take you a lot of time compared to um, a one-step lighting solution which I think HDRs that's kind of what they're all about is just dropping a light uh, dropping in a sky dome and it just works first time uh, the other way people try and fix these is going and painting a sun in themselves and that's not a terrible solution but again it's just you know you're going to have to spend that time going in and making sure you set the right amount of stops for the sun you've painted in uh, make sure the colour is correct that you don't oversaturate or undersaturate the sun the blend between you know your background sky and the sun isn't going to be as nice as a, a photographed one and so it's just generally less accurate and finally the, the last way that's um, the last way to fix these is to add your own virtual sun in so you'd probably halve the power of the of this clamped HDR and get a virtual sun in and that's uh, that's a pretty good solution and gives you a bit of control over that virtual light uh, it's something you can also do with a, a properly shot HDR if you want to have that extra level of control so that gives you the option um, but again, it's just, a, I suppose, a matter of, of time, whether you want to go through that process of adding your own light in and lining it up and choosing the correct strength and, and everything else to go with it.
So as I said in that uh, the Photoshop part of the video, uh, just make sure when you're looking at HDRIs uh, for, for something that has a fully revealed sun, you want to be looking at around 16 EV, 14 to 16, if there's no cloud concealing it or anything like that. And then as you come down to afternoon uh, near sunset, We'll just step this time lapse through near the end. <clears throat> I think I showed this in the in the Photoshop section as well. Uh, yeah, you're looking at kind of five or six stops right on the horizon line, and then as the sun dips below the horizon, it's more like uh, one or two EV. And you can see in in these as we go closer and closer to sunset, the sun loses a bit of strength, which means we get more blue sky fill light and the sun is more saturated so you can see more color um, so that's like another thing you can do with these is simply select a frame and it'll load that HDR uh, you can you know choose whether you want a sunset or midday or you know somewhere in between and then you can look for frames that either have a fully visible sun with sharp shadows or you can find something where the sun is only just behind a little bit of light cloud which will diffuse your shadows out a bit or you can have something where it's even further behind cloud and gives you very blurry shadows so it's quite a quick way of uh, of coming up with different lighting scenarios so I hope you found that useful uh, there is a set of free samples much like this one available on my website so I'll put a link on YouTube for that and thanks for watching cheers